All right, everyone. Hey, welcome back to Kitchen Table TCG. My name's Louie. Today, uh, we're going to talk about all the cards I've purchased since Monarch. I'm going to talk about something. Um, I don't want to make this video. I'm not real excited about this video. I don't like... Um, I don't like the idea of sharing the amount of money that I spend on Flesh and Blood. I think it's going to give you the wrong impression of me. My wife told me not to make this video. I'm sure tomorrow George will yell at me for making this video as uh, I'm mostly doing it because I feel like the community has just been not super great uh, directed at towards me. Some key people in the community, I guess. I would call them uh, have just not been super nice and um, they say that I hate flesh and blood and that I am out of the game there's rumors going around and people are being PM that I have sold my collection so I'm gonna show you I'm gonna show it to you right now I'm gonna show you everything I purchased since monarch and um, you can count them out I'm gonna tell you exactly what I remember paying for I don't know if I can be super accurate I want to start this off by saying uh, I am not a whale I don't have old magic the gathering money I don't have an expensive job and uh, a high rise building in a city and uh, that is not who I am. I live in West Virginia. Uh, I was, uh, I, I don't need to get into my history, but that's, uh, I do not advise spending this amount of money on any TCG. Uh, let's start this off. Um, I care about the game and I freaking love the game and I'm just sick of it. I'm sick of people saying that I don't love the game. I love collecting the game and I'm passionate. I'm going back to my face. I'm passionate about the game because I care so much about it. And if you mistake um, passion for anger or frustration at the game, that's wrong. Passion means that you care about it enough to speak about the things that you don't like as much as you talk about the things that you do like. I feel like on my channel, I've been very fair about being excited about the things that I'm excited about and being frustrated and angry about the things I'm not happy about. And I feel like there's just all these rumors going around and I'm angry about it. So maybe I shouldn't be making this video. Uh, but I just wanted to clear the air a little bit. So this is everything I've purchased since Monarch. Uh, let's start with playmats. This is not every playmat I've purchased since Monarch. I have purchased every single playmat that has been released other than Art of War. Uh, Art of War is just not one that I feel like I've found a deal on that I can justify spending. Uh, a good chunk of these I got in a big, huge lot. Uh, I do own every single playmat other than Art of War, and I have personally purchased every single playmat other than Art of War. Um, I know that I'm a store, uh, but I, I do, you know, my prize support goes out the way that it's supposed to, and then I buy things on the open market. Um, the monastery. I was very upset when this playmat was given out again, and I didn't make a video about it, and I'm glad I didn't, because I heard that they actually didn't reprint it, that they, um, they put out, um, you know, more that they had printed. I paid, like, uh, I think, like, $800 for this one. <laughs> And then the Solana play map, the most recent pickup. Uh, I think I ended up paying 500. I'm going to try to guess at the prices I paid for everything. Uh, Command and Conquer, I think I actually paid 300 for that one. That was like the going rate for the skirmish play mats at the time. They have fallen down to about 150. I'm going to leave the Solana play mat up for the cards. Um, all right, this also does not include all the things that I have purchased for box and case breaks. When I do a box, box or case break, um, I actually buy from the secondary market uh, the day that it sells out. Uh, and then I use for my own collection for the video and then I'm recouped it. So I haven't sold any of my boxes. Actually one Arcane Rising box I did sell uh, because the, the purchase that I did on eBay got canceled. So I haven't bought that one up again. But other than that, uh, let's start off sealed product with a Monarch Unlimited first edition booster box that was uh, that I purchased from Australia. Uh, the week that these were going around, um, yeah, kind of crazy. This is a first edition inside. It's unlimited packs, but it is a first edition box. I don't even remember what I paid for that. Uh, so I want to start with that. Uh, and then I do love Crucible of War, you know. Um, so here is, this is since Monarch these have been purchased. Uh, six boxes, loose boxes of Crucible of War first edition. And this is in addition to, um, I think I had six before uh, Crucible War, either six, or maybe it's two cases. I think I have two cases. Um, and then a whole nother uh, case of Crucible War. Again, I'm not flexing. I'm just sharing. Like this is what I purchased since uh, since Monarch. So uh, those, all ten of those were purchased um, 
when when we hit the like seven hundred dollar mark i just felt like it was way too cheap for crucible first edition i still think that's too cheap for crucible first edition i probably should have waited because it has fallen down since then um and then since monarch release i have also uh purchased two cases of monarch first edition uh now i will say these cases uh came as a part of a big lot i would not have purchased monarch first edition i kept uh 40 boxes from my pre-order uh, I pre-ordered like 125 boxes or something like that, a Monarch First Edition. I sold um, 40 of them, I believe, to patrons at the basically the cost, the average cost that I pre-ordered for. So I made no money. I actually lost money if you do the math right. Uh, and then I opened up 40 boxes and then I uh, kept boxes sealed. So uh, these ones, I don't remember. I think I ended up paying like uh, $450 a box for those monarch first edition that was like the week of release all right let's get to the good stuff the singles you guys want to start with dgen let's start with dgen recent purchase um has been with all the news this is my dgen specs binder uh and just with the uh unlimited out of print news i bought some unlimited cards um because uh it's now you know it's there's collections so uh teclo founder heart i felt like it was too cheap i think we'll see mechanologist here in a couple weeks, uh, in uh, not in the next set, in the next, uh, not in a couple weeks, in the next actual set. Storm Striders, I also think we'll see Wizard eventually. Uh, Sync, uh, E-Strikes, I think those are way too cheap if you compare them. We'll get to, oh, this is, if you're still here still, this is the uh, the, the cold foils we'll talk about. Um, uh, E-Strikes, I just think their foil version is too cheap based upon uh, the out-of-print announcement and the other E-Strike foils. Sync Belows, those are just super rare and hard to get. Uh, all the missing ones are, they're in decks. Um, Cokes of Commotion, I'm all in on Cokes of Commotions. Uh, these are all unlimited. I've got a binder of first edition too. Uh, Spoils of War, Twenty Blade, just that, you know, cards I think are really good for, um, for long-term growth of the game. Uh, and unlimited versions, I don't know. All right, let's talk about, oh, first edition, you want to see the Cokeses? Cokeses of Commotion. This is my first edition. I don't put foil, cold foils in here. My first edition Cokes binder. Here we go. These are some of these are doubled. Uh, oh, I like Room Blood Barrier too. Uh, some of those are all those are doubled actually. So uh, a bunch of Cokes first. Um, all right, let's talk about the real cards, and we're gonna talk about prices because I do remember most of the prices that I spent on these. Um, this Twinning Blade. Um, I so I had pulled. I would never pulled a Twinning Blade in all my Crucible openings, and I uh, had a, a Twinning Blade. And I bought another one because I thought I was going to get it graded and I never sent it in to get graded because when it actually got there, there's some whitening on the corner and it's just going to come back a nine. And um, yeah, anyway, so I bought a twin blade. I think I paid 1100 for that, if I remember right. Uh, it wasn't terribly long ago. All right. Uh, so Monarch came out and in the uh, right before Monarch, I committed to paying for a bunch of... Um, uh, all right, right. Uh, I committed to buying a bunch of cold foil commons. So everything you see here is basically purchased after or during our live stream of Monarch. That was kind of the cutoff for me. Uh, and uh, that one was not purchased. Sorry. I don't remember exactly how many um, cold foil commons I purchased, but I purchased a good chunk. I think it was 25 uh, for... Um, uh, for $75 each. Uh, that was my cold foil common going rate. I was all in on cold foil commons. Uh, we had no clue what was happening for Monarch. And then, uh, you know, it happened. And now they're, they're worth about half the value. So I paid about $75 for each of these uh, from two different people who uh, agreed to sell me their cold foil commons before Monarch's actual release date even happened, uh, which was kind of fun. I got a lot of slack from the community for undercutting the market or um, or uh, being a terrible content creator and taking advantage of the market and undercutting it at $75, which now I lost 50%. Anyway, uh, I also, while we were in the stream, really, really thought that Cold Foil Majestics were really super undervalued. Um, so there were people who were buying cold foil, uh, legendaries for $1,500 at the time. And I, uh, realized how much more rare cold foil majestics were. So I started buying cold foil majestics for $500 each. And I bought, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
what was that nine cold foil majestics at five hundred dollars each uh at that time this is the ones that i purchased at that time uh really hexagore i i don't know i guess everybody else knew that the card sucked but i didn't and so i bought a bunch of them uh dread scythe i actually bought three of these um two of them uh are no longer in my possession i did end up uh just selling them on tcg player during one of the big sales so uh, i just was sick of looking at dread scythes honestly uh this card got increasingly worse the more that i looked at it to be honest i, I just don't understand when it's ever going to be good for that attack anyway uh they put so many other rune blade cards that you know uh, so I, I, I really, uh, was excited about cold foil majestics and I kind of missed out on that one, uh, which is what it is. Um, I have no regrets. Like I have no regrets buying these because they were like the way that the market was, you have to understand when Monarch came out, the market was just completely nuts. Um, and like, this was a good spec. These were, these are so much more rare. Go look on TCG player. Oh, probably not on Hexagore. These are so much more rare than the legendaries. It's, it's incredible. Um, the, they're more rare than the ledgers. I'm telling you, when the print run data comes out, these are more rare than the legendaries. That's my belief anyway. All right, that's stuff that I bought like during Monarch release and on Monarch launch. Oh, uh, in that too was uh, Mark of the Beast. I thought I had more of these, but maybe I just didn't grab them. Uh, I definitely own more of them. Uh, it was a Luminaris too. Uh, sorry, a Lumina Ascension. Oh, here's two more. Uh, I thought I had more of those. Anyway, uh, these are... Again, these are, I have a pile of, the way I do my collection, I have a pile of things that I've opened. Uh, like one level of my safe is the things that I've opened. And then the next level of the safe is the things that I've purchased. I just like to keep it different. I actually have two different spreadsheets. I use my EV track or my um, spreadsheet tracker. Uh, so anyway, uh, yeah, these were the same way. I was paying $500 each for these. Um, and those have held up better than a lot of these. Um, I wish I had bought more of the Luminaris's. Uh, I actually bought a Luminaris later too, but uh, not during the Monarch release. Anyway, uh, lots of, I would say that's been, this has been the heaviest loss I've I've had was the Monarch stuff. Uh, I also, I did good. I, um, I prevented myself. I never opened a Library of Solana. If you remember that on the channel, uh, it was horrible. And I opened up 40 boxes. Actually, I actually think I opened up 52 boxes total of Monarch First Edition and never opened up a library. Uh, so I did pretty good and I waited till it hit about, I think I paid uh, 1,200 for one and 1,000 for another. Uh, so I think I did pretty good there. Um, you know, it hasn't dipped too much more since that, maybe eight, 900 bucks, but um, I, I did good on waiting. That's what I, and that's what I'm needed to do now with Tails is, is just wait. Uh, okay, so then at the, uh, the National, uh, the at nationals I picked up I love prism and I think prism is just a great hero and I really like prism and for whatever reason I just kept buying cold foil prisms at the vendors who were selling them at the at, not at nationals at um, at Vegas I just really uh, I just liked them and so I picked them up and purchased them and uh, yeah I think a couple of them I got from other people too uh, I remember I think I paid like one I think my average was, was pretty good on this one. My average was like 150, I think. Uh, I just think this is a, it's a gorgeous card. It's an iconic hero. Uh, I don't know. It's good. It's good stuff. Um, I was pretty stoked about Prism. Uh, and then I at, uh, at Vegas, I was able to capture um, a Phantasmal Footsteps, I think for 275 uh, and Carrion Husks. Um, uh, you know, uh, Chain was super good. Everybody was kind of like, what's going on? I think I picked up Carrion Husks. I think it was, I think it was paying... I think it was like 250 on my average on that. I can't remember. It was around that. Uh, but the goal, the reason I picked up some more of these, and I actually picked up, um, I think I picked up eight, was to dollar cast average against uh, some of the other cards. And basically, I believe that these will end up um, appreciating more long term uh, than the way that we've anticipated. Like, it's just different. Like, I just, in my mind, it's dollar cost averaging when it's really not because it's not the same card. But. Um, all right. I also recently picked up, um, a lot that had, uh, four of these in it. I did trade, um, uh, what's his name? Casu. I did trade Casu. I know I broke up the set, but, uh, it was a good trade and I really wanted to do it. So I traded Casu. Uh, so I don't have the set anymore, but I do love these promos. Uh, the hero, you know, 22 promos. These were very, very early. These are buy box promos, I believe for crucible of war first edition. Um, yeah, cool. Uh, I don't remember what the value of those were. They may have even been like part of the deal. Uh, that deal also had uh, this E-Strike. 
Uh, this is an 8.5 E strike. Uh, it's got uh, terrible, terrible grades. The the centering is quite horrible. Uh, this was a deal of which I bought a lot of things. And one of the reasons I bought it was to do an alpha break. Uh, but the reason I did the entire trade or deal, I think it was a, I think it was a purchase, uh, was to get this card because I wanted this card in the collection. I don't care that it's an 8.5 because it'll be in the collection forever. Uh, but yeah, I wanted the E-Strike Rainbow Foil. Now, um, the other thing that was in that collection that I really believe in and I still believe in, uh, Foil Drone of Brutality Alpha, just because, uh, was a full set of Cold Foil um uh cold foil comments uh i don't remember if these were all from the same thing but i bought a whole nother set so i think i now have two full sets if i'm not mistaken um but since monarch i have picked up a whole nother set of cold foil comments i've talked about cold foil comments a ton on the channel uh i can't remember if this was all one deal and i believe what i've done in the is my app like i i won't pay more than 300 dollars for a cold foil comment just personally um, that's just my price. I think that's the price point that I, uh, I got my other set for. So I was like, I can't pay more for another set. So I waited and as they dipped, it's just my personal price. I'm not saying that's all that they should be worth, but when you paid something for a card, you don't like paying more, you, you know? Uh, so I really think cold foil commons are a great entry into this kind of first array of alpha or arcane first edition. Uh, and I think that $300 is just too cheap. Like the, that target is just it, like when they go down to that price, I usually start buying them. Uh, now that I have two sets, it's like, uh, I don't know, like I could buy them to invest in, but then, you know, if I sell them, people make fun of me and yell at me on the internet. So, um, you know, Snapdragon scalers, definitely worth more than 300. Definitely one that I would pay, you know, a, a higher premium for, uh, Goliath gauntlets probably there too. Uh, some of those more iconic ones. Uh, but on average, I think my cost basis is around $300 each for these even uh, post Monarch. Now these did skyrocket. There were a, there was a time when these were very, very scarce at that price point. And that was like prior to Monarch and then post Monarch, we've seen a retracement for them. And I've kind of just picked them up, you know, uh, one at a time. Uh, there was a big lot. I can't remember exactly what was in that big lot. Sorry to whoever I purchased that from. Anyway, I did pick up a second set of the cold foil commons because I do believe in the cold foil commons immensely. Uh, all right, I got a, uh, a spring tunic for, um, uh, $4,200. Uh, you guys remember the video when I told you about that? I think it was that. Uh, now here's the thing. This is a nine. Uh, it did not come back graded super well. There was a corner. George told me not to get graded. I did anyway. Uh, I like graded cards. They're, they're way better. Um, this I this I, before I did this video I was excited because this was like the only thing that I was still up on. Uh, but recently, a cold foil tunic sold for four grand on eBay, so I guess I'm down on that too. I don't really care. Again, like this, the reason I bought this card is because I wanted one for the collection. Like I I believe in the cold foils enough that like these will I'll never sell it. Like I love it. Like it's my probably one of my favorite cards. Uh, it's an iconic flesh and blood card. I do think long, long, long term, 25 years down the road, uh, the tunic could outclass the fables uh, just because it, it is it is the tunic. And it, uh, but uh, everyone's going to disagree with me. That's just an opinion. Um, all right. I also um, have uh, a couple of these promos uh, that was just in a lot. I don't, I don't even think I paid anything for them. I think they were just kind of thrown in in the lot. Um, but they're nine fives, but they're not subgrade, so it doesn't really count. Uh, other things I've got, uh, I picked up a, uh, grass of the arc Knight. This one I did well on too. I picked up a grass of the arc Knight on eBay for 1400 when I was playing, uh, when I was playing, uh, chain and I wanted a cold foil one for chain. And then I decided to send it in and got, got it graded and came back in nine five. So I'm way up on this. Um, I also did that with a mask of momentum and maybe this is why I'm getting, um, crap on the internet, but I did this with a mask of momentum. I bought it on uh, the interwebs. I don't remember what I paid, but I got it graded and I was able to double my money and help pay for my wife's car, which, you know, I don't know if you know this, but this is my job. So like, sometimes I have to actually make money and not just buy cards. Uh, I have some patrons, but like, this is pretty much all the patron money. I can tell you that much. Um, so, uh, Brave Forge Bracers, uh, this one came from Australia. This is the only one that may have not been, this actually may have been before Monarch. I can't actually remember exactly when I got this, but this one has a, um, a mark on the bottom of it. You can't really tell, uh, 
there it is you see that mark on the bottom uh so that's why it's an eight five the, the surface is an eight um but i i think I, I think that one was before mark we'll take that one out uh i think i paid 1200 for that if i remember correctly uh then of course i do have the rudy alpha investment uh whatever um and mine came back a nine i really wanted a gem mint version of this um i decided to burn the other one that one video is coming at some point uh so and then um i do have uh the fables the unlimited fables i think there's a heart and an eye in my cheyenne deck that's put together uh these i bought when they were low at like 225 listen fables were 700 dollars for forever and uh 225 seemed like a pretty good deal uh so i think i picked these all up at around 225 ish and then they went out of print i bought these before it went out of print like i i don't know um it's crazy anyway so that's i mean i don't know what the numbers are there it's got to be i don't know stupid amount of money i don't advise it like I, I just if you are in a position where you have let's go here if, if you are in a position where you have um, a lot of disposable income, then yes, by all means, go, please go buy flesh and blood cards. Please go help the market. But this whole idea that you're never allowed to sell a cold foil, that you're never allowed to take profits, that you're never allowed to, um, it, it's just, it's frustrating. It's a really frustrating, it's a frustrating, it is frustrating being a content creator right now. Uh, you know, I love this game. You can, like, I, I love that. Why would I buy cold foil commons if I didn't love the game? Like, why would I, why would I spend my money that I work so hard? Like the, I make like $5 per video or something like that. Like, it's not like I'm like some famous YouTuber with 300,000 subscribers and, uh, and you know, I'm not alpha investments. Like I'm not here. I didn't come from a huge, I, like, the idea that you're don't let somebody tell you that you're not allowed to sell your stuff. Um, and I'm not selling my stuff, but the idea that we're, we're, we're making fun of people and we're angry that people in our community are sell. This is a trading card game. If you're not going to trade the cards, if you're not going to be okay with your friends or the other people in the community trading, trading the cards means nothing, especially for those of you who are store owners and are running businesses. Like it's okay to trade cards. It's okay to buy cards. It's okay to sell cards. Um, but here's the thing. And this is why I don't, if you're still watching here, then you actually care about the video. This is why I don't do a whole lot. This is why I've never done a video where it's like, Hey, this is what I'm buying because like, your situation looks a lot different than mine. I am a content creator. Like I have the ability to use these cards for part of my business. I have the ability um, to, to, uh, to move them and to do different things with them. And um, like the sealed product, like I have, like it's just different. Like it's, it's different on this side of the screen. And I don't want to pressure anybody into doing something that they're not comfortable doing and feeling obligated or feeling like um they have to stretch themselves thin in order to um to be a part of this hobby i have some brands in in my world i buy play mats because i have a play mat brand right like the kitchen table tcg play mat like not my plan like now i'm trying to say like my brand is that like i buy play mats so i'm like kind of obligated to buy every play mat you are not like you are your own individual person and you're entitled to whatever you want to do and on top of that listen like there are things that aren't perfect and those things should be discussed to make them more perfect uh and to say uh that somebody who is passionate because they want things to be better doesn't care about the game is cowardice it's it's small and it's um i'm not a yes man and you don't need to be a yes man either uh in lss i love you um flesh and blood has has single-handedly uh renewed my passion for tcgs uh and there are reasons that i got involved in flesh and blood that are no longer the direction that I see going and that sucks. And I want it to go in the other direction because I believe in that direction. And that's why I got here in the first place. 
Um, and so I'm going to speak about it and, and that's fine. If you don't like that, then you don't have to watch the videos. I'm, I always try to be fair. I always try to be kind. I always try to be, I don't try to, I don't call out other content creators, even though they call me out. Like I don't, um, make videos about, uh, this thing or that thing that this person said, or even they call me out in a video. I don't even, I don't do that because that's not what this is about. This isn't about me and this isn't about them. This is about a game that can be better. This is about a company that can be better, even though they're really good, even though there's really good things. And I talk about the really good things too. It can still be better. Um, and as somebody who has, listen, it, this is, this is a lot of skin in the game. These cards, not this one. Uh, the, these cards is a lot of skin in the game, but this is nothing compared to the amount of skin in the game of producing two videos a day and diving into the, the market and, and doing all the research and, you know, creating a community and running events and, and doing all the things like that is skin in the game for me. Like buying cards was never skin in the game. In my opinion, skin in the game was quitting my job and starting a YouTube channel and running with a YouTube channel and be, just being invested in the community and in the people that was skin in the game for me. And if that's not enough for you, that's fine. You don't have to watch my channel. Uh, if that's not enough for, if that's not enough for LSS, that's fine. I'm not doing it for them. I'm doing it for the community and I'm doing it because I love the game and I love the community and I love the people. Um, so I'm not going to change my tone on the channel. Um, I'm just going to try to show you. Oh, I forgot something. If you're still here, I forgot to, I, I forgot this part. I like cold foil comments from tails are too cheap. I bought a bunch of them because seven, $8 is too cheap. Like. I forgot about that. I just saw that over there. Like, I'm not going anywhere. I love this game. I'm invested. Not just, like the, again, the cards don't matter to me. The amount of time that I invested into creating a YouTube channel that documented the history of flesh and blood from, from crucible war first edition to where we are now. Like that's my investment because I think in 20 years, that's going to matter a lot. I think in 20 years, it'd be really fun to go back and watch a made the Zuby with you podcast and be like, Oh my gosh, George was wrong about that. Oh my gosh, George was right about that. Louis was right about that. Louis was wrong about that. It'll be fun to go back and look at those things. Nobody is saying that they're hundred percent true or accurate or, or whatever, but they are what we see and we can only know what we see. Um, anyway, this is getting ranty. That's not my intention. I hope you guys have a great day. Remember to be kind to the people around you. And, uh, I don't know, maybe I shouldn't post this. <laughs>